Good afternoon. This is Rich Nelson with Allendale. Coming to wrap up comments. Today is Friday, February 24th of 2012. Obviously, a little interesting day of overall as far as pricing. Uh, outside markets, we did see the U.S. dollar down 47 points here today. That was actually hitting new lows for its downtrend. In fact, uh, the U.S. dollar is now at the lowest point it's been since December 8th. Of, uh, of last year. So quite a, quite interesting to see that we did have a, a sharper lower U.S. dollar, which didn't really impact us too much, at least on the grains. But uh, however, as far as crude, up another $2. So this uh, wraps up a very solid week of big gains for crude oil. Uh, gold down nine dollars here today. As I said, though, as far as uh, as far as the grain trade, today's sharply lower U.S. dollar did not really give us too much to to uh, run with as far as grains. Uh, May corn up one, December corn down about three and a quarter. So we did see further widening of that very closely watched July December corn spread. Soybeans up four and a quarter cents, and wheat up one and a quarter here. Uh, as far as more, as far as news this morning, uh, of course, uh, a lot of people's eyes were on USDA's uh, numbers out of that annual Ag Outlook conference that they do each time, each time, uh, each uh, each year at this time of the year. Uh, as far as news, numbers really weren't too much different as far as corn for their ending stock numbers. Uh, keep in mind, yesterday they discussed the uh, plannings and prices. Today they actually gave a full breakdown of supply, demand, and more important to the trade, the ending stock numbers. For corn, we're still going to rally, uh, still going to increase uh, uh, ending stocks from 801 million bushels up to a dramatic 1.6 billion bushels for 2012. Now keep in mind, there's also some discussions about what type of yield the USDA was using. Maybe it's too, uh, too high or not. But uh, one thing we discussed here on Allendale's report for tonight, if you guys are subscribing, was the difference between the 164 yield, which USDA is using, and Allendale's more conservative but more realistic 161.4. What type of effect would that have on, ex on ending stocks? And uh, important to us, though, is, is that going to change at all the main message of rising stock levels going into 2012? So we've got that discussing here as far as corn. Over on soybeans, the numbers actually were a little surprising. Uh, USDA suggested that old crop ending stocks will, will uh, at, at 275 million bushels, will actually drop to 205, 205 for new crop ending stocks. So that actually was a big surprise. Bottom line there is USDA said exports will increase enough to offset higher plantings and higher yields. And the key issue there, of course, is maybe we're getting business from South America with their sharp production problems. Over on wheat, the numbers were not too surprising. USDA did, did suggest a, a good increase in wheat stocks going up to 975 million bushels. So that continues the bearish theme for wheat for both U.S. as well as the world picture. In other words, rising supplies. Another thing of interest here this morning was the weekly export sales report. Soybean sales as far as the weekly numbers. Now this covers sales made between February 10th and 16th. Uh, and of course USDA's numbers for soybeans were a little larger than expected. So that's why beans did run, uh, did run the show here today as far as being a little higher uh, due to the weekly export sales as well as USDA's favorable report for U.S. ending stocks. It looks like uh, as far as today's action, uh, funds bought about 3,000 contracts of corn, about 4,000 contracts of soybeans, and only about 1,000 on the wheat here. Over on livestock for cattle, we do have a, quite a few things lined up in front of us, in fact, as of uh, from here on out, in fact. Uh, though we did see a, a, a trade down 17 cents on the April contract, we're still waiting on some information. Uh, it looks like feedlots are still holding out for trading cash cattle for the week. Uh, of interest there, looks like they'll be waiting for the monthly cattle on feed report. This is going to be due out here at 2 o'clock this afternoon. The trade is expecting about a 1.2% drop in placements compared to last January. So we'll see if that does happen or not and what effect it could happen. Uh, it could have on uh, this afternoon's uh, cash cattle trade. But more important, what type of supply setup does this give us for the summer to early fall period? right when January placements would be marketed as fat cattle. For hogs, we're looking at about a $0.37 cent higher trade for the April contract. Uh, we have seen gains this week for cash hogs. Certainly true. One thing we're noting here is, is, uh, is can cash pork, though, keep up? Uh, we've got to point out that uh, while cash hogs are higher than last year at this time, cash pork is actually lower than last year at this time. So we might see packers have some more arguments regarding slaughter levels and things like that here going in the next couple weeks here. 
But as far as big news for the week, we have to wrap things up, of course, with a lot of exciting news from USDA this week, a lot of discussions about new crop supplies and things like that. As I mentioned here, for you guys who are subscribing, take a look at tonight's wrap-up comments. Certainly look at the corn also, and even the beans as well. A lot of action, a lot of interesting thought as far as 2012 supplies and what it means for you, what it means for prices as well. If you have any questions or you want to discuss these numbers in depth with us, give us a call here at Allendale. Our number is one 800 262 Seven five three eight. This is Rich Nelson. Hope you had a good tre- a good week. Hope you have a good weekend, and we look forward to talking to you here on Monday.